Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about something I think a lot of us deal with, which is changing motivations. And like, at some point in time, I think we all lose motivation. But there's something to be said about how your motive, what originally motivated you to change, and doesn't necessarily motivate you anymore, and the struggles that come along with it. And I, I know that's something that I'm going through right now. As you've noticed, I have been been posting a little bit uh, less in terms of videos. I'm struggling to make content. Um, life is going well. And they're, the things that motivated me don't necessarily motivate me anymore. Um, but the goals are still the same. It's just the things that made me get up and be like, yes, this is why I'm doing it. Not so much, but now we have this other thing, which I'm trying to use as motivation. And so we're going to talk about some of the struggles that come along with that, especially as some of you struggle to maybe go and get that first dev job, go and get that promotion, stay motivated to continue to code, learn new frameworks, do whatever it is. Do that side project that you you know want to pay the bills one day. We're going to be talking about that. Some real shit. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you're interested in checking out a bootcamp where they include housing with the tuition so you can get up and go, might I recommend Dev Mountain. They have multiple locations. Not only that, they have programs in QA, full stack web development, UI, UX, and iOS development. Check them out for more information at devmountain.com. So... One question I get, you know, every now and again is, what made you want to code? What motivated you want to code? And, um, you know, because it's sort of crazy thing. I I never really thought about it, but I was watching a Chris Hawks video, and I forget who he quoted, but he, the so he quoted some famous uh, dev who said something along the lines of, "Is that it's sort of crazy for anyone to learn software development." Because it requires so much upfront time, energy, and investment that there's almost something guaranteed to be wrong with them. Uh, and like I know for me, I'm a little bit awkward. I'm sort of the odd man out at times in my family. I uh, don't say they don't love me or whatnot, but I, I sort of rang true to me. But when I was starting to learn to code, I was trying to solve two things. Hunger and poverty. My own. That's 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 it, um, and um, you know, as I have gotten more comfortable, and I've gotten fat, and I'm not living paycheck to paycheck anymore, those things have been less of a motivator, and they continue to keep me motivated for quite some time, and for um, you know, and they still do to a degree, but not nearly. I'm not nearly as hungry as I used to be in the sense of. Not physically, that's also true. But I'm not, I'm not nearly as hungry for continuing my growth and and my career as I used to. I'm still pretty motivated, I think, but I'm not as motivated as I was. And there's something that's a little bit depressing about that at times, uh, because you'd like to think that it could be old age. It could be that I'm getting older. I'm 32. We ain't we ain't, we ain't that young anymore, boys. Um, but it is one of those items where things are good. And I don't want to say I miss the grind. Like, the grind is always there. You're always growing. You're always grinding, hopefully. Um, but it's not the same type of grind. There's a different sort of rock bottom energy that you get when you are... Like you, you're like, dude, I got five bucks put in my gas tank to get to work. I get paid tomorrow, and then we're gonna do our, we're gonna, we're gonna do fifty-seven dollars <laughs> on groceries. Everything else gotta go to rent. Like, like you know, and um, you know, it, it's funny now, right? It's, it's, it's like because it's like so many years of doing that, where you have a couple good years, and then you're, you're like, dude, what, what happened to my hunger? Like, cause Things have been shitty uh, and hard for very long. And now a couple good years, all of a sudden you, you got that type of drive. And so you have to find something else that motivates you. 
And it's not just like, it doesn't have to be that extreme. One thing in my life, and April probably would hate that I, I say this, is that, um, and I say this as a happily dated man. Uh, I can't say married. We're not married, but dated, a happy, happily dated man. Uh, <laughs> April, I've been dating almost a decade now, which is a crazy thing to say. Oh, my God. Think of all the women out there that missed out on this for the last 10 years. I'm sorry. I'm taken. And for all the 1% on my channel, uh, uh, which I, I wish there was more uh, women in this in the tech industry in general. Um, that's a joke for that because there's, 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 uh, my analytics on the channel show that about 95% men. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if something I'm doing or just whoever was watching the channel. But anyhow, um, one thing that she sort of uh, gives me crap for is that I used to be in actually pretty good shape. Um, but it was the, the thing that motivated me to stay in shape was um, dating, being single and not wanting to die alone. And like um, as I've gotten more comfortable and I put a, um, a GPS tracker in April so she can't run away. Uh, joke. 100% joke. Uh, some people are going to watch this very seriously and they're going to be like, yo, I knew it. <laughs> um, some family members that aren't very fond of me, I imagine. Uh, but but yeah, as, as I've gotten more comfortable in my relationship, we've grown together. We have plans for the future together. You know, we're talking about getting married and having kids and doing so on. all the shit you do as you get older and, <laughs> and uh, you know, you start settling down, right? I have not been motivated to maybe you know have six pack abs not like all the things that i used to do and there's a very small time where i had six pack abs but it, generally speaking in the sense of staying in good shape like this would not be the shape i'd be in if i was on the market because the market has its own rate you know what i'm saying like, like there's there's supply and demand and the supply for th this physical specimen is way too high and the demand's way too low um and it's it's sort of unfortunate because that that has always been as i used to work out and things like that be what motivates me and one of the things that from a professional standpoint that i'm i'm going through is that one of the items other than the whole being broke and all that another item that motivated me to continue to grow my skill set to continue to better myself continue to make money and progress my career was that i never really liked any of my jobs and so um i don't want to say i i hated them uh that wouldn't be accurate um probably minus the one i quit after three days but there was uh I don't think you can hate a job you quit after three days. It's just not for you, um, in all fairness. But the roles that I have had up until now were roles where within the first few months, I knew that I probably wasn't going to be there very long. And the idea of being there for five years wasn't going to happen. And I'm now in a role where I, I'm very happy. I have some previous colleagues I worked with came on my team. I got them come over. So that's pretty cool. I'm working full remote. I get paid well. I have good benefits. And I, I generally like all of my superiors. Like there are things that suck about every job. But as far as jobs I have had and now being about seven, eight months in, um, we are, I think, outside the honeymoon period. And for the last couple months, that thing that has motivated me isn't really there. And so I've lost these two crucial motivating factors where I was motivated by um, essentially having a you know hard time so being broke and, um, and struggling to get by. And so, okay, we're not struggling. And now the other item that motivated me was like always chasing the next paycheck and always chasing the next better thing. But, like, I don't necessarily want a better thing. I have a pretty good thing. And it's, uh, you know, it's one that I, I – it, it's a strange feeling. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. And something I've been going – I've been trying – I've been thinking about how to overcome this. And it actually took me a little while to even figure out what it was caused. Because I knew the first one. But I was like, yeah, but I, you know, 
life's been pretty good for a little while now and I don't think that's it and and I sort of came to the conclusion that I think that this is the item that has demotivated me to a sense where you get comfortable and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing appreciating what you have wrong with appreciating what you have. And to a degree, I don't want to be on the opposite end of the, the coin or on the other side of the coin where I'm always worried. I'm always stressed. I always have to do something better because we don't know what's coming around the corner. Right. Um, I don't want that, but I would like to have a little bit of that hunger and I, I do have goals. I do have aspirations, but what I have sort of figured out and what I, you know, for me, that as I've sort of been going through this transformative phase, um, at least I feel like I have, is that that I may be happy with my role and my job and my company and the people I work with and all that. But what I want to do is um, still grow. What I want to do is still i still want to do the same things i've enjoyed doing but the the end goal is slightly different and having to have that realization and i bring this up not necessarily talk about my personal situation but sometimes i think when we are going through a very when we are going through life with moments that we do not fully comprehend and i, I think as software engineers and this is going to be a bit of a stereotype, but I can only speak from my perspective and the people I've worked with. So if you're not one of these people, and if I'm generalizing the industry, I do apologize. But I would say that there is some truth that software engineers are more likely to be a little less in tune with their emotions, a little less in tune with what's going on. Like some social norms I don't pick up on, which drives my girlfriend insane overly logical you know that's one of the things that i um that can be a, a detriment and we'll talk about that in an upcoming video but sometimes it takes me a moment to you know i know something's wrong but it takes me a moment to fill, figure out what it takes me a moment to do that and i have to go out of my way like i I had, <laughs> you see that whiteboard? I had to write what was going right with my life, what was going wrong, and literally start doing like a little, you know, you do, you do the circles, like good, bad, neutral. Like I had to do that to try and figure out why am I feeling the way that I am? Why am I not, why am I not being the person I want to be? And how can we get back on track? And what is that track, right? You start having to have these conversations with yourself. We figure out what's next. Maybe maybe you say, in my case, oh, well, maybe you're not looking to jump jobs. But what are you looking to do? Well, you know, I'm looking to maybe make passive income. I'm looking to grow as a developer. And I want to, I want to do things like give conference talks and say, okay, how can we do what we were doing and shift our attention and our goals to get some of that hunger back? Because now we're actually more interested in this, which helps the whole picture, but you have that new goal in mind and that new thing you want to accomplish. Why do you want to accomplish it, right? Like one thing I've, I've want to do is go and maybe share to it. So there's a, a quote and I usually don't like these quotes. <laughs> I usually don't like these like quotes you see on Facebook or Instagram where they're like super like, yo, do, it, do this and do that. But there was one quote I actually really did like on li that stuck with me was uh, essentially said something along the lines of become so become so good in your field that you don't have to introduce yourself anymore. And I was like, hell yeah. Like, like, I don't know. Like that to me was something that I want to do. And why, why do I want to do that? Well, I've talked with a lot of you guys occasionally at conferences and one-on-ones and, one -on and, you know, we, we work in an industry where there's a lot of, and it's not like an ego thing. Like, Hey man, you know, my name, you know, my name, my name's Dolan. No, um, uh, it's as somebody who is in, in, you know, not to be overly dramatic, but transformed his life by doing software engineering and going the self-taught path. I want to help other people do that. And 
one way that you do that is by people seeing people like themselves out there that have gone through similar shitty situations and overcoming that and you have to sort of get your message heard at times and that's sort of what i want to do i want people to know that they can with hard work dedication sleepless nights lots of caffeine a couple tears maybe a little blood probably no blood they can go and they can you know change their their lives for the better um and have a a career that they enjoy and are happy with and you know that's something that i really want people to know because it's it's you know i've i've told april this uh but the last four or five years of my life minus my early childhood where i was playing a lot of super nintendo (laughs) oh i don't don't really remember what i did as a guy i played a ton of super nintendo though um but these have been probably some of the happiest years of my life and every year seems to be doing better because now instead of worrying about how I'm going to pay for rent and food and um, have a super stressful job, I have a fairly low stress job and I can start worrying about the things I want to do with my life rather than things that I have to do with my life um, to make sure that I keep on living. So as you guys are struggling through whatever motivation issues you're having, what I want to encourage you to do is solve them. Don't assume anything in life's just going to happen, and that includes with internal struggles because that's really what we're talking about here. So I hope that if you're having an internal struggle trying to f- figure out why you can't stick to whatever you can't stick to or why it is that you're not happy, why it is that you're not able to accomplish the things, I generally hope that you go and you write things out, write them down, figure it out, think about it, dedicate time, effort, and energy. Make that a priority. Don't just let these things sort of go in the back of your head because they stay in the back of your head. So with that all being said, guys, I appreciate all of you. I, uh, I This might have been a little bit more of a personal video for me, uh, but I, I do hope it is one that some of you can relate to and some of you can understand and hopefully some of you provide see value in as you try and figure out what maybe your motivation concerns are and how you're going to tackle them. So as always, guys, thank you so much. I got courses in the description below, all the books and stuff I recommend as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, guys, don't forget to hit that notification bell or smash that like button while you're at it. And if you're interested, I just released my latest course, the 100 Front End Technical Question Challenge, which is there to help you pass those front end technical interviews. There's over 100 questions. You can get it for just $9.99. The link is in the description below or use coupon code CODINGGOD.